So thank you so much for being here today. Um, welcome to the Repurposer Pro Workshop. I am hoping that this will, if you don't already repurpose materials for your art practice, this will be a start for you because there's so many materials out there for everyone to repurpose. There's really no need to go get fabric unless you love to get fabric. And I have nothing against fabric. I love fabric. Um, actually, let me start with a little bit of who I am. Um, long, long time ago in a galaxy far away, I started off as a fashion designer and I spent about a decade being a fashion designer. I was in the mass market industry, not the high end market. We designed for um, Kmart and Walmart and all places like that. Um, you may remember a brand named Gitano or Sasan. They're no longer around, but that's who I used to work for. Um, and then after that, I went uh, into costume design and fashion design. And that's where I spent another decade of, of life. Um, and then after that, well, costume design, I worked for film and television. So we were shooting all around New York City and down to Philadelphia, all around, you know, the tri-state area. Um, and when 9-11 happened, all of that stopped for obvious reasons. So that kind of wind up being, wound up being the end of my uh, film and television career because I wound up having kids and it was just it was it wasn't I loved working on film and television but I didn't think it was conducive to having a family <laughs> a very long hours so I decided to drop out of that um, and be, I became a stay-at-home mom but I can't just sit and not do art it turns out so I started creating artwork from fabric at first because I had a lot of it. I certainly had a lot of scraps. Um, so I started making art from fabric. I discovered what art quilting was all about. Um, I had no idea such a thing existed. So Quilting Arts Magazine, that was a whole like, whoa, my head was blown. Um, so that was very exciting to do. Um, and then I eventually, you know, back then, plastic shopping bags were not as ubiquitous as they are now. They were just, you know, every now and then you'd find one that would be really pretty or it had some nice graphics on it. So I would be the person saving those few bags here and there because I was reusing them or, you know, I wanted to carry something in a pretty bag. Um, and I started saving more and more. And I honestly do not remember how it first happened, but I assume I needed a certain color in the fabric that I had. And I didn't want to or didn't have the time to paint it or whatever and I used a plastic bag and lo and behold you can stitch on plastic bags so I started using them more and more in my practice and oops more people are popping in second so I started using it more and more in my practice um, and when I started using plastic bags I started noticing how they were appearing more and more and how I was able to find so many in so many different colors that I didn't need to use any kind of paint on the pro on anything I was doing because the plastic came in those colors um, and the plastic was transparent or translucent and I could layer them together and get a whole slew of other colors um, which I really enjoyed but I started researching as to what I was using and that's when I started finding out about plastic pollution, single-use plastic pollution. I'm sure most of you have heard of the, the great plastic gyre in the Pacific Ocean. Apparently, there's more than one. I've heard there's five. Uh, but even with that, there's just, the, the problem is not with plastic. Plastic is an amazing material, and there's you know many things to be grateful for, from my computer to the chair I'm sitting in. It's the single-use plastic that is ca causing the most problems. So I don't know if you know this, but in the U.S., only 5% of plastic actually gets recycled. Um, the reason mostly is because nothing else can be made from them. The whole recycling system is made on the, pro on the process of um, collecting the material and then making it into something else. But the soft single-use plastic is almost impossible to make into something else because of the various, if you 
have collected it for your class, you for this class today, you know that there's all different thicknesses, different colors, there's different printing on it. There's just so many different chemicals involved in making so many different bags that it won't make something unified and whole so they can't sell it to make something new. So luckily for us, we can make art with it. So that's our way of recycling it. Um, and I love that about it. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. But I'm going to start things off with a poll because I want to know a few things about you. So this is just five questions and most of them are multiple choice. So if you could please answer those questions for me, I would love to know about you. We're all curious, here we go, you'll see. Most of you already use the repurposed materials, yay. And a lot of you use vintage fabric and discarded fabric. Some of you do use single use plastic already, dryer sheets, color catcher sheets, all right. A lot of thread waste users, yay. Hard single use plastic straws, very few for the beverage containers. Okay, fine. Lots of paper users and let's see. Well, the top is painting. Oh, no, hand stitching. Hand stitching wins. <laughs> oh, machine stitching and collage. Yes, yes. Oh, a lot of photography. Awesome. Most of you have a home studio. Very nice. Dining room and yeah, bed. Two of you are working on your bed. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> All right. Well, again, thank you so much for joining me here today. So as I was, I think I started talking about this earlier, when I usually use plastic bags or any kind of plastic, I either use the color part of it or the graphic part of it. I do different types of art with different portions of the plastic bag. The solid colors are usually saved for my nature scenes or sometimes my architectural scenes. All the printed parts and the graphic parts, I do a lot of um, graffiti inspired collage with those. Um, I use some of it in some of it for the other artworks as well. But there's, you know, there was so much color in it always that I never really painted it. I, when I first started doing it, I painted a little bit here and there just to experiment. And then as the years went on, my pile of plastic has gotten, of clear plastic and just white plastic has gotten much, much larger. It's ridiculous. You, I don't think you can see it, but I have, I have a huge bag up on the shelves over there. It's very light. So, and it's all full of clear plastic. And I have another box over there. The clear plastic is just, it, it's just everywhere. Um, and although I did make some white on white artworks, I was kind of getting a little bored because I love color. So I got went back to my acrylic paints, which I used to do a lot more. I used to paint fabric with acrylic paints and things like that. Um, and I got into painting plastic bags. And that is what I'm going to show you today. So I'm going to just turn on this one more light. Hello. There we go. Okay. I want to make sure you see everything. So I would suggest that you put an apron on and roll up your sleeves. I am very good at getting paint all over myself. I clearly do not do it often enough to be able to keep myself clean or I'm just a messy person, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, if you um, don't want to paint manicure, you might want to uh, put on gloves, but I like to work without gloves because I, I really, I'm a tactile person. I love to feel it all with my fingertips. <laughs> I want to feel it all. So um, I have several colors of acrylic paint here. You can use any kind you like. I would suggest that you keep to two or three colors plus black and white. Turns out I have <laughs> three tubes of used white titanium white and a little bit left over for black. Clearly I need to stock up on the black. Um, 
I, in general, prefer heavy body acrylics just because I like the viscosity of them. But I use regular acrylic as well. And that's that works totally, totally fine take this off so you need some water hopefully you have some water to wash your brushes with and then a little container for the glue but we'll get to the glue later on um brushes your basic house painting brush is totally fine in various sizes um, i like the flat brushes here's a small flat brush and if it's already used and wrecked that's totally fine that's probably all the better these are my two palette knives that, that I like to use. Um, but if you don't have one of these, if you make cakes and you have one of these to uh, do the frosting on your cake with, that works totally fine. Uh, this is actually for cake frosting. So I'm going to put it aside and take it back home. <laughs> um, okay, so I am going to share my screen so that you can see what I'm doing. <clears throat> so also sometimes when I share my screen, I am not able to see the raised hands. So if I'm not answering your question, do speak up. Okay, can you have a thumbs up? Can everybody see my screen? See my plastic bags on here? No, you do not. You're seeing something else. Let's see. Oh, that's weird. Hold on. Hey, Natalie, or Natalia, sorry. That's okay. You can, can you see me or are you seeing my, seeing. you're seeing my screen. Hold seeing. On. Yes. Yeah. We saw yeah. your bubble wrap, et cetera, and okay. a little image of you on the side. Yes, we see you in the gallery, and then we see your background of what you're showing us, Natalia, all your plastics. Right now, you've got bread bag black. You see my hand? Yes. Yeah. All right. Whew. It was acting a little weird all of a sudden, showing me the bags that I had on here before. Okay, awesome. So all of these bags are really, really great to use because they're clear. This one has a sticker on it that would probably, if I tried peeling it off, it would probably just rip the bag. So I'm not even going to do that. This is a completely clear bag. That's great too. This kind of plastic, I really like to use as a top layer on my work. So this, I think there was some paper that I bought. Yep, exactly. It says paper on here on the sticker. So it's really, really light and it'll just fly away, but because of its complete transparency, it's gonna be great. This stuff came from a paper towel wrapper, totally usable. I mean, this is the kind of plastic that I would also use for um, any of my graffiti inspired artwork because I can cut all of these portions out and use them as well. But today <laughs> we're gonna add paint to it all. This bag is great because it's got some printing on it and it's still transparent, translucent somewhat. You can see my hand through here. So all of this is totally usable. So let's get started. Just going to move this to the back. All right. So the first thing I like to do is I want to get my plastic as flat as I can. So what I do usually is cut it along the seams so that it's a neat rectangular piece of plastic. And what we're going to start first with is we're going to be preparing our materials. That's why we're gonna get our hands dirty and we're going to prepare a lot of plastic. And then I'm going to show you how to put it together into some artwork. And then Excuse I will show you even more. Excuse of, me, Natalia, can yes. you give some examples of plastic that you would not use? Or is there any sort of plastic you would never use? There is no plastic that I will not use. I use it all. <laughs> I use it all. Okay, so this is a very rather long 
piece. You're not discriminating. It's Cynthia. You're not discriminating towards plastic. No, Cynthia, I do <laughs> not discriminate a, a, on plastic unless it's there's it's lying on the ditch on the side of the road. Then I discriminate against it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to cut these pieces into a little bit smaller sections. And there were some breadcrumbs in that one um, just so that they're easier to see. Put that side away. Okay. So my favorite way to start doing this, I kind of get into it more and more as I work on it because I get excited about it, um, is to start with a palette knife. So all I really do is I squeeze out, oops, somebody's popping in. There we go. Okay. So all I really do is have my palette knife ready, squeeze out a bit of paint and start smearing it around. And this is actually, if you have some really old acrylic paint, this is a good way of using it up. Because if you actually paint, like I know chrysanth paints, I don't know if you paint with acrylic paint, chrysanth, um, but I would, you know, if you have old tubes, this is a great way of using it up. So I am just literally smearing it on. I don't want it to be solid because the beauty of it is all the marks that it will make. So once I have it smeared on a part of it, come on, focus better. There we go. Once I have it smeared on a part of it, I'm going to fold it. I'm going to fold it. I'm going to smush it together. That's a very technical term. And then I'm going to pull it apart and see the beautiful cool marks it makes. And then I'm going to smush it together some more. And I'll smush it together this way too. And then I open it back up and you can see how it's, the paint is spreading and it's covering things up and it's giving really, really like lovely textures, but it's not covering things up completely. So I have the other part of this piece of plastic that I cut off before. I'm going to pick it up now and I'm going to put it face to face. And I'm just going to squish it together. Now, if I left this together as is, it would glue together because essentially the paint will act as glue, but I'm going to peel it apart. Oh, and look at the lovely color that I have on here. So this here is the first piece of finished material and I'm going to put it aside. <clears throat> so I hope you're all smushing some paint together on there. So I have a little bit of this magenta pink on here. Now I'm going to add a little bit of this purple on here. Again, I'm just smushing it together with a palette knife. And I'm putting it mostly in this clear area because now I'm going to fold it over onto the other color. Press it tight and pull it back. And look at this cool texture. So it's a little bit of a Rorschach test. I can't pronounce that word. And I'm going to fold it up this way too and move that color all around. So you want to be putting the plastic, I'm sorry, you want to be putting the paint on the one side of the plastic. The other side, we want to keep it clean. From the paint. So I'm just literally smushing it around and opening it back up. So there's a very thin layer of paint on here. Now I'm going to take a different bag. So I have this um, newspaper bag. So I'm going to push this aside for a minute and I'm going to cut apart this bag. Karen? I'm good. I'm on a Zoom uh, workshop right now. Can I call you back? 
Okay, bye. All right, so I'm gonna cut apart this bag right here. And by the way, if there's holes in the bags or if there's um, rips in the bags, it is still usable because it'll have even more texture. So I cut apart this bag. And now before this paint has completely dried, there's some goopy parts on here. I'm gonna put this right on top. Hey and there. Smush it on. No, you sound so much better. All right, I'm sorry. The transformation. Let's see. Oh my God. I was ready to I'm just going to, oh, oh, I can't, there, I can mute, okay, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so I'm going to peel this off now and look at the cool color I got on there. So this bag now is good to go. There's no globs of paint left on it. There's some really cool color on there. I'm gonna put that aside to dry. And now I have this bag to add to. So actually the first thing I'm gonna do is pull the other half of it on here and see if I can pick up any paint on there. I can. <clears throat> All right, so anybody else experimenting? Do we have some nice experiments going? Yeah, oh, yes. Check the chat. Yes, it's fun. Yes. Okay, good. Nothing in the chat. Any questions so far? Get your hands dirty. All right. Oh, I see some of you are wearing gloves. Very nice. Okay. So I think that I want to just add a little more purple to this one. And I'm going to smear it on with this big brush right here. And this purple, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little bit, it's got a little bit of a gel-like feel to it. That's because this paint is really, really old. <laughs> um, and again, that's the good way of using it. So I'm just using a big brush and I'm smearing it on like this. And you can see where I started doing it. Oh, somebody popped in. You can see where it's all thicker here. That's where I started it. But as I'm spreading it around, you can see the thinness of it. And I want to smear it around as much as I can. I'm just rather aggressively moving that color around with my big brush. Do not worry. You will not rip the plastic. And if you do, it's still okay. Now I'm folding it over and smushing the colors together and then pulling it apart. <laughs> and again, this is a great way to start the next bag. So I have, here's my next clear bag. Natalia, at, yes. at, at any point, have you wet your brush? No, I have to be not. Smith? Nope, my Thanks. brush is dry. I will wet my brush later. I will show you that. All right, so here's my next plastic bag. I'm going to cut it apart. And I'm going to put it right over this purple so far. Oh, see, there's a hole in this plastic bag and it moved and that's okay. I'm smushing it all together. And then I'm peeling all apart. All right, so this blue newspaper bag has some great color on it. It's got some nice marks on it from brush marks. So this is all good to go. I'm gonna put it aside to dry. The beauty of acrylic paint, of course, is how fast it dries. But look at the print that I just made on this clear plastic. Look at these really nice markings because I pressed it onto that newspaper bag. I actually like it so much, I'm gonna leave it as is and I'm going to cut off this clear portion of it. 
and I'll continue on the clear portion, but this is going to be wonderful to use as is. So I'm just gonna put it aside to dry. That's Adele here. Can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Um, is the goal to make the paint on the plastic as thin as possible? Yes. Or do you leave globs in some places? No, don't leave any globs. Thank you. Make it as thin as possible. All right, so this plastic has a slit in it. So I'm just going to continue and cut this apart. So my brush has some purple paint on it still. So I'm going to continue and I'm just going to make some brush marks. Um, by the way, my table is covered in freezer paper, the shiny side up. Um, I know that some of you who are quilters probably use freezer paper piecing or something like that. Um, but I use freezer paper in my work. So see these marks that are starting to appear on my freezer paper? By the time we're done today, this is going to be a gigantic mess and it's going to be another material that I can use in artwork later. Okay, so this, when I have so little paint on the brush, you can see how wispy the marks become. They're different from the marks that I was able to make earlier. I'm sort of just dabbing it on. There's very little paint on the brush because that's all went into the other bag. But see how I made some really nice wispy patterns and cleaned my brush at the same time. These are going to be wonderful when they're layered. So I'm going to put this piece aside as well. And I have this tiny piece left over, so I'm going to continue cleaning my brush. I don't know about you, but I love purple. There's always some kind of purple that makes it into my artwork. So I can't help but continue and make more purple. Okay, so here's another piece. So I'm going to grab another plastic bag. I'm just going to cut off the bottom from it. And cut down the side to open it really flat. Okay, I'm going to cut it in half because of the smallness of the screen. So now I still have some paint on this brush. And now I'm going to wet it. I'm just going to dip it in here so it's very little. And I'm just going to splatter it on here very lightly. But you see what it becomes something else now. It's got a lot more water in it. Now I get these bubbly portions of it. So I'm just tapping it on. Some of them are lighter. Some of them are darker. This will take a little longer to dry because I added the water to it. So I left half of it without any paint on it. Now I'm going to fold it over and smush it together. And it becomes a whole other different texture. So see how gloppy it is and how it moves. So I'm not going to add anything more to it right now. I will add something to it once it's dry, but this is this will take a little bit longer to dry than the other pieces. So I'm just gonna put it aside again. All right, so let's do some other color now. How's everybody doing? Any questions? No. Okay. So oh, I got some on the bottom of that. So Black is good to use because black is a really nice accent color. So I'm just cleaning off my uh, palette knife here. I'm going to get a little bit of black going here. I'm going to just squeeze it out onto my palette knife and smush it around.
Okay, so hopefully some of you have a little bit of bubble wrap that you got for this. We're gonna use the bubble wrap to make some more pattern making. I have, I have some large bubble wrap here. And I'm just going to press it onto the plastic, take it away and then press it onto another part of plastic. Especially I wanna press it into the goopy parts and then press it elsewhere. So you see, I'm making these round dots. I'm sure most of you have done this, something of this sort with bubble wrap before. It's a great material to make a lot of textures on paper, but in this case, we're using it on plastic. So I'm just moving it around and pressing it. I want just some circles on here. I don't want all full circles. By the way, when you're done with this bubble wrap, but for using it for ma making uh, the textures, pop the bubbles and you can work on that, use that into, in your art as well. So I am now going to, there's still some gloppy paint in here. So I'm actually going to fold it in on itself here and there and just transfer the paint all around. So it kind of looks like it could be just a gigantic mess right now. But trust me when I tell you later, we can put it into a really cool collaged artwork. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this piece as is. I'm going to put it aside to dry. Okay, let's see. Oh, that very thin plastic that I had on here that I told you was from a paper that some paper came wrapped in. I want to use this because this is going to be really nice. I think I will use it in a different color now. I think I'll do some white because, you know, we could use some white. I've had this rag for wiping my brushes for probably 30 years. <laughs> I have several of them. They all came from the same bed sheet. Okay, oops, I have to put the cap on on my black. I have very little of it. I would hate for it to dry. Okay, so white. Let's spread it around with a different brush. So I don't know what you call these, but these little things that came off the excess paint that dried, I think you can call them paint skills, skins, but these are sort of like more paint snots. Um, I save <laughs> these because you can, you can use them too. All right, so here's some white. Just squeeze out a little bit of it. Not much left in this tube, gonna use it up. I'm just going to squeeze it directly onto the plastic because there's very little of it left. Okay. Maybe I'll get more out with a palette knife later, but for now, this is good enough. All right. So this is a little harder to see because it's white, but it's important to have it for a contrast. So I'm just using a smaller brush. It's a dry brush and I'm just smooshing it around just like I did with the purple before. Smushed it around a little bit. You can see my table is getting nice and dirty. Now I'm gonna fold it in on itself and peel it back together. So that's the beauty of it. It's just keep getting, we're, we're just preparing materials, more and more textures. And this is so light, it sticks to itself very easily. You want to peel it apart completely. All right, so I have a good amount of paint on here now. 
Mm -hmm. I think I actually have a little too much paint on here. You can barely see my hand through here. So I'm going to take some away by taking a different plastic bag. Thomas's English muffins, anyone? I just to... used that. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> I'm just going to slice it on the side and open the bottom of it to make it into a bigger piece. Oops. See, I already did it. All right, so I'm going to try to get this flat on here. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to use the Thomas's and I'm going to put it the graphic side down because I want to obscure the graphics. I'm not interested in exactly what it says. So I'm just smushing it down on top of the other plastic. And now I'm peeling it off. See what lovely texture it makes and it's obscuring the graphics. So now I'm going to actually just take this portion of it over here and dab it onto my other plastic and see if I can how much I can paint I can pick up on it. This really soft plastic that I have as a starting point is rather flimsy because it's very light. So it's a little bit of wonky. You could use some blue painter's tape to tape it into place, but I actually don't mind that it keeps coming up because the more I layer it on, the more strange textures it makes. Okay. <laughs> So I've taken off some paint off of this white. It dries so fast that sometimes you can't get off everything that you want, but that's pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna put it off to the side to dry. <clears throat> when you put it off to the side to dry, try to put it down as flat as you can, because if it sticks together, you may never be able to pry it apart. Okay, so now I have this Thomas's English muffin bag that has some white on it. I'm going to just cut apart this corner so it can lay flat. Oh, one more, one more spot here. Okay, so now I think I have some, let's see, let's add some color. So it's got orange. You know what, this color, this red is kind of close to an orange. I'm gonna just add a little bit. It's an orangey red. It's going to add a little more. So I have some white already on there. It will blend a little bit with some of that white because the white is not completely dry. What I want to do on this piece of plastic is sort of obscure the graphics, but not completely because I do want to use the color and the lettering that's on there as texture. So I'm just sort of spreading it a little bit everywhere. <laughs> And now I'm actually going to wipe my knife on it. Oh, it doesn't want to slide. There we go. And now I'll play with it a little bit more and fold it in on itself and spread that color around. See how this really got obscured? That's what I want to be doing. Hmm. So this is a nice, bright piece of plastic. So this already looks very cool and I can use that as is. But in here, I have a little bit of white and a little bit of red and they're not blending together. They're sort of layering one on top of the other. And this portion is gonna be really nice to use. Gonna add a little bit of it. So the red paint is still fairly wet. 
So I'm going to move it around and spread it around some more. I don't want to leave any glops on. I think that's pretty good right there. Okay. There. I'm pretty happy with that. Going to put that aside. Natalia, how many sheets do you think we'll end up with? Well, I can keep going all day. <laughs> um, if you, the, the more the happier, to be honest with you. The, yep. the more sheets you have, the more options you have when we start putting together um, an art the, the, the artwork. So Got I would suggest that, let's see, I made, that was three bags, four bags. Four bags of clear. Now we're going to move on to the translucent bags. Anybody want to share and lift up what they're doing? If it's lift upable. Oh, Ooh, let's see, Constance. Hold on. I'm going to spotlight you. Oh, those are lovely greens. Look at that. And I love having the 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 scan code in there. That's great to use. Thank you. Anybody else want to share? Oh, Elaine, hold on, Elaine. Let me spotlight you so everyone can see. Oh, that's great color in there. Fabulous. What kind of a bag was it? Oh, you're muted. All right, take your time, put it down. <laughs> Oh, let's see, Jim. It's a clear plastic bulk barn bag. Oh, okay. You completely uh, made it solid. Oh, yeah. you got some gold in there, Jim. Very nice. Cool. Let's see. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Oh, hold see. Candy, hold on. Let me spotlight you for everyone. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice, nice brushwork on there. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Who else do we have? Muffy. Let's see, Muffy. Uh, oh, yeah. I love it. Very nice. I have a blue and yellow one. Who said that? Diane. How? Uh, oh, there you are. I see you. Hold on a second. Ooh, very nice. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Thank you. All right. Anyone else want to share what they've picked up? Nope. Nope. All right. So let's move on to some solid bags or not so solid. So I'm going to go back to my camera. So shopping bags. I don't think we have AC more here anymore. I think they all closed. So this is an old bag. Um, oh, by the way, if any of you are worried about the longevity of your artwork made from these bags, do not worry about it because unless you expose it to the elements as in put it outside, it's going to outlast us all. <laughs> not like fabric. No, not like fabric. Not at all. So I've had, and I have had some artwork that was made specifically for the outdoors. Um, and it can last there for up to five months. It was only after five months that I've noticed some deterioration on some of the, the pieces. Um, there was some fading from the sun on the colored plastics that I noticed before that. Um, mm -hmm. But the the deterioration takes a while to start happening but if you keep it in the in the indoors you'll be totally fine okay so this is the reason i love these bags is because they're translucent you can still see through them so that if i put you know i have this graphic here and i put this bag over it i can still see it but we're going to add some color to it so i'm going to add some color to this part first um let's see I think I'm going to use some more black. 
And I already have a little bit of red on this palette knife. I don't know if it's going to affect on it here, but because there's red in the graphics, I'm not going to worry about it. Nope, that's pretty dry. So I'm just going to smear it on here. Oh, I've smeared some on. I'm going to clean my knife. And look at this lovely spot that I have that happened right here. So this bag was pulled on here, but, bec but bec because it was pulled, it's not very flat here. And it's got some lines. And I, cut, I got a circle and this lovely texture in there. That's what I love about it. They actually, the older bags, the more they've been in your trash pile, because they're all wrinkled, they, they'll get some really nice texture. So I'm putting the other part of this bag right over this plastic bag, smoothing it on and peeling it back apart. So I'm sort of killing two birds with one stone here. Well, hopefully not killing any birds, but I'm gonna use up more of that black. There we go. All right, so I think this is good as is. I'm gonna just put it aside. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to smush it together like this, just like that. And get a little more texture on there. There we go. All right, now I'm happier. I'm really happy with how dirty my hands are. <laughs> okay, putting this to the side. By the way, the pieces that I have done earlier are already almost dry. All right, so I have some good marks on here. I like these black marks on there. I'm gonna let them be. I have some of this, what is this? It's not gold, what is it? Oh, bronze yellow. I don't even know if I'll be able to squeeze any of it out. This paint is so old. Oh, some of it is coming out. All right, I'm going to smear it on here. So this will be two colors. This is another tube that I have had for a gajillion years. It's got a little bit of this, the, the paint's got this slightly uh, bubbly, gooey texture to it. You can sort of see it. That's because it's really old. All right, I'm just gonna smear it around like this a little bit. Clean my palette knife onto it. And now I'm going to fold it in on itself in a few different ways and see what transfers, what doesn't transfer and what happens. So some of the black is transferring onto here. Some of the gold color, the brown color is transferring onto there. Some of it is blending because the colors, both paints are somewhat wet but this is a really, really fun texture. All right, look at how pretty this is. There we go. So I have my color spread somewhat evenly on here. This is a great piece to start with. I think I'm happiest with this piece out of all the pieces that I made. No, that purple one was really nice too. All right, putting this aside to dry. And let's do one more shopping bag. So we have a whole bunch of, you should have several pieces of the clear plastic. And now we will have several pieces of the, translucent plastic, this white plastic, with some graphics on all of them. So I'm cutting apart this plastic bag. Usually I like to cut apart the bags by cutting the bottom off and the handles, and I still use all of these, so don't throw them out. Um, they'll be, they can be used for something else. So this plastic bag has a hole here already, so I'm gonna use that as my guide as to where to cut it apart. So this has a bunch of graphics on it. I think I want to obscure this. And for ease of showing it on camera, I'm slicing away a section of it. 
All right, so I think I'm going to continue with a little bit of this, this bronzy color. Actually, the more I use it, the more it's making me think of baby poop, but you know, that's all a good thing. So I just put a glop on it onto here. And now I'm going to use this bu big bubble wrap mm -hmm. to, to move it around with. So I got some nice circular print in some places and just muddy stuff in other places. Now I'm going to take my smaller piece of bubble wrap and move that around on here. Okay. okay. So I got some color spread out on here, but I'm not really happy with this. The bubble wrap sometimes works really well. This time, I don't like the what, what it did. So I'm going to open this back up. I'm going to I folded it in on itself, and now I'm opening it back up again. And mm -hmm. I'm just going to spread the color around evenly. And there, I smushed it a little bit on here, mm -hmm. smushed it there, and opened it back up. And I think I'll add some black to it now to just bring a little contrast, a little more interest to it. I think I'll brush it on actually. Okay, honey. All right, so I'm just mushing it around with a dry brush. What's going on outside, anything? Uh, okay, I'm going to mute. There we go. All right, so I'm just mushing it around. Some of the color is blending. Some of it is not. I keep squeezing a little more on it and just moving it around. And now that I did that part, I'm going to see if I can take away some of the color with bubble wrap. Let's see. No, it's not really working that well. But I can move the but I can move the bubbles around. Look, that's actually very nice. I was trying to take some away, but instead I'm adding it in other places. So having a little bit of a bubbly texture in other areas is going to be lovely. So it's a good way of moving some color around. Anybody else working with bubble wrap? Yes. Yay. Hold on, we'll have some, everyone share in a minute. Okay. So. There. Now I'm much happier with this piece. It was looking like it was it was looking like baby poop for a while, but now it looks interesting. There we go. Even if I don't use this whole piece, and it's actually going to be unlikely that I use this whole piece as is, there's really cool portions of it to use in a collage that I'll be planning on in a little bit. I'm going to move a little bit more around here. So when I prepare my materials this way, I will do this for several hours and have the entire floor covered with all sorts of plastic printed like this, because then that gives me a really big stash to keep working on later when I don't want to get my hands dirty but I really do enjoy getting my hands dirty once in a blue moon. All right, this piece is all good.
All right, so I just have the other portion of the bag that I'm going to use some paint on. Um, I think I'll actually use it more to clean my brushes with and see what happens. So I have some black on this brush. Kind of sort of turned into gray. Oh, I've got some thread on in there as well. So I'm sort of just going to clean my brush off with that. So it's actually a quite a lovely gray with nice brush marks on there. Sort of cloud-like. That makes me pretty happy. Let's see if I have any paint left on this bubble wrap. Oh yeah, there is a little bit here. So I'm gonna add that, a little bit more in there. So this is a surprise bag because I didn't expect to be that much paint left over on this bubble wrap, but look at the lovely textures that happened here. There's still more coming off of this bag, goodness. There, I think that's enough. Oh, there's my big bubble wrap also has some paint still on it. Let's see if that will come off. Hmm, not much, not anything significant. All right, but this is actually a very lovely surprise. And sometimes you get those. It's so delicate with just a little bit of color detail. That's all you need. So I'm gonna put that to the side. All right, let's see if anybody wants to share what they've been up to so far. Um, okay, I got two pieces. Nikki. Okay, I see you, Nikki. Um, Hold on, let me spotlight you. Let's see. Um, this this was um, a combination of every. Can you see it? No, you got to lift it up. There you go. Ooh, nice. Yeah, and then I did the um, I did the bubble wrap over the black and put it over the white which mm -hmm. is just a little touch of it. Very nice. So I see that you have quite a bit of paint on there. I would suggest that you take another piece of plastic and put it on top of one of these and just make a print of it. Okay. Because you want very little paint on the plastic. Yeah. Okay, I'll do it. It dries pretty quickly, but you don't want globs of it. So if any of you have a little too much paint and it's still wet, print press another piece of plastic on top and make another I was, print. I was just going to say that. I got my best piece mopping up because I had stuff that was too wet. Exactly. <laughs> Let's see. Let me see, Pat. Yeah, very nice. Exactly. Yep. I was doing the same thing. <laughs> Who said that? Yeah, me. Muffy. Muffy. Oh, very nice. So oh, I see you have red. Hold on. Let me spotlight you. Let's see. Yeah, mopping it up is great. We want these pieces to be, excuse me, as dry as possible because we're all actually going to start making an artwork with it very soon. Very nice, Muffy. I was doing the same mistake. I'm trying to let everything dry now because I'm using too much paint. Let's see. Let's see, Anna. Oh, cool. I love that line, the folded lines you've got in there. Oh, you're working with big pieces. Awesome. Oh, yeah. So if you have <laughs> excess paint somewhere, take another piece of plastic and make a print. Just put it right on top. Perfect. Yeah. And that way you'll have more. Okay. Any questions? Uh, Natalia and Sivan, I'm just wondering why uh, you keep emphasizing that the paint's really thin. If it's thicker, is that going to cause a problem down so the road? It can. If the paint is really thick, um, it'll likely flake off. 
It may take it a long time to flake off, but it can flake off that plastic. But also I want to be using layers of this plastic. So if we're doing it, if you're covering the whole piece of plastic with all this paint, then the layering won't work as well because you won't be able to see through it. So it's a little bit of both. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else want to share or have a question? Nope, I'm trying to see. Nope, nope. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to take a sip of water. So now, hopefully, some of you have saved your Amazon bags. Oh, Cynthia. Yes. What's up, Cynthia? You're muted. I was trying to save you all from hearing my husband. But other than that, I wanted to share. If that's okay. okay. Too late. Nope, not too late. Hold on. Let me spotlight uh, you. I'm sorry. I hope I'm not on the. This is the uh, this is the water one. Okay. Is it um, oh, is it still it, wet? Mine is it, still wet. Yes, it's still a little wet, and it's on the inside of the bag. So the print I did it on not on top of the print. Got it. Okay. There's that one. Okay. I apologize. I'm using my phone. It's okay. Ooh, nice one. Well, I love that. Somebody else used blue and green and yellow. That looks fabulous. And then this one here is on the on the top of a potato bag. All right. Uh, what else I got here? Oh, I do have different. I have only have one size of bubble wrap. That's fine. And what else? I actually. Um. Oh, this is on the inside of a. Uh, paper bag i mean a paper towel yeah excellent okay excellent. i think i think that's about it they're all oh wait one more <laughs> oh very nice okay i'm done very nice awesome okay thank you i'm quiet <laughs> <laughs> natalia yes i spilled too much um water on mine so i just decided i would take a, a piece of paper and mop it up that's brilliant awesome yeah using switching materials yeah, there's nothing wrong with that that's great that is great okay yes cynthia your hand is raised again you just got to click it to on uh, to uh put it down okay oh linda you have a question linda I do. Yeah, I was I'm just curious if anybody else has gone rogue and started using other things to smush the paint with. <laughs> I hope place, so. Or for me, some of the plastic I collected was netting, uh -huh. from various, you know, garlic and different things like that. So I'm just curious if you've done that at all and kind of just been keeping quiet and holding that question and wondering you know, kind of what the next steps are and whether something like that would so be. I fun. have used it. I'm, you know, I use netting all the time, but I was not going to use it in this workshop just because there's too many things to show then. Uh, but yeah, you can use netting for printing. You can use netting for shading. You can use it for many, many things. Yeah. Um, I'm sure most of you know that I have the Repurposer Collective. And there's a workshop in there on netting. There's several workshops in in the collective, the master classes in the collective that have all sorts of ways of using plastic and uh, plastic mesh and netting is one of them. Yes, Elaine. Uh, I just realized how gorgeous my gloves are getting, and I'm. I know <laughs> you should save them. I will. I will. Yes, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I uh, actually have some painter friends that uh, I make them save their gloves for me. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them are using oil paints, which is why they like them. But uh, yeah, I actually really like seeing seeing my hands dirty. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to move on to some thicker plastic. So this is, you know, one of those Amazon bubble mailers. Um, I like to sometimes pop those bubbles but these are very hard bubbles to pop if you've tried popping them with your fingertips it's very hard to do i find it almost impossible i have this really scary tool left from my pattern making days back in fashion um, it's very sharp so what i do i'm going to share my screen again 
So what I do with this, you see how scary this tool is? It's really, I, I've hurt myself with this. <laughs> um, but it's great for popping bubbles because I can just roll it right on. So if you want to, you can get something like this and most you know, fabric stores, Joann's and everything, it's for pattern making. Um, so if you do some patterns, make your own patterns, it'll be good for you, but it's great for bubble, bu bubble popping of all sorts. So that's what I use it for. Um, the reason that I like to pop my bubbles is because I add stitching to most of my plastic and bubble wrap that's not popped is a pain in the you know what to run through the sewing machine. I've done it. It can be done, but I'd rather not do it if it can be helped. So we're going to use some of this and also we're going to use some of this other plastic, uh, also Amazon plastic that's silvery on the inside. Mm -hmm. But let's start with this bag, with this mailer right here for now. I am going to, no, that this fits into the screen. So I'm just gonna finish quickly popping it. Most of it, I don't care if it's all popped, but as long as most of it is popped. So now what I'm going to do is combine two different pieces of plastic. So this is where another plastic bag will come in handy. I'm gonna use this one right here. So your second piece of plastic needs to be a little bit larger than this piece of plastic and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm just gonna cut apart this bag. And I don't even know where this bag came from because I have never been to Ollie's. <laughs> That must have been one of those donation bags. All right, so I'm just gonna cut it apart into one big piece. Now that it's cut apart, I'm just gonna put it to the side here. And now I have this piece here. So I'm going to go with one dark color. Let's see, oh, I have this copper acrylic. And I'm going to use a lot more of it now. I'm going to squeeze a whole bunch of it onto here. And this is where you want to glop it on. And I'm just going to spread it a lot around with my palette knife a little bit. Somewhat evenly, but not too evenly. I'm gonna clean off my palette knife on it a little bit. All right, and now I'm going to take the plastic bag and I'm going to, again, to use a very technical term, smush it on top. So this is why I want the large, the plastic, the softer plastic on top. I want it to be larger because I'm going to use the paint essentially as glue and I'm going to add a lot of texture to this piece by gluing the plastic right on top but smushing the softer plastic over this. I want to move things around, move the paint around to completely obscure the mailer but I also want to create some really interesting folds on top here. So I'm moving, I can feel with my fingertips where I have more of the paint and that's the paint where I'm smushing it around and moving it around more. So the graphic is face down. So I'm sort of, I can read it, but not really depending on where I put the folds in. I want to move it around until the paint is spread out a little more evenly and until I have the folds that I am pleased with. I have edges on the on the outside that are left over. I can leave them, I can cut them off later. Now, obviously, because we're using paint as glue on here and it's acrylic paint and it's trapped between two pieces of plastic, this sample will take a long time to dry. 
probably even more than 24 hours, depending on your conditions. Diane, you're in Arizona. I know you might you might dry much a lot faster than some of us. So, but you want to smoosh it around and see what lovely texture you get. So this piece, like this, will be a great piece to start with as a base for our artwork. And I will show you how to do that in a little bit. All right. So. Forgive me, just so that I'm clear, you're leaving them to dry together? Yes, yes. They Thank you. They, they will become one. And because I use that sturdy mailer, this is a good base for an artwork, whether you just want to use it as a collage or you want to stitch it. Either way, it's a very, it's a good solid base. So I'm pretty happy with the way this is. And I'm going to trim off my excess. So you see how I've sort of shifted things around and shifted them together. So I have some really nice folds. I think I'm going to move a little more in from each side, a little more to get a few more folds in here. So you could use a little more paint right under there. I feel it peeling away. So I'm just going to smush some paint in here. So I'm going to smush it around in there. All right, that's better. Okay. So I can leave this as is now because it's this. it's got this lovely sort of peachy color to it. Um, it's got some nice folds on it, but what could be fun is adding a little more color to it, especially a contrasting color. So I'm going to use a little more, little white, and I'm going to add it on with a palette knife that I need to clean, at least a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to squeeze out some white. I'm going to squeeze out some white onto this palette knife. Oh, I don't think I'm squeezing anything from this tube. Pardon me, I got to get a different tube. Here's my other tube. I don't know if I'll get any out of this. Yeah. All right, so just on my palette knife and I'm going to spread it around and see how the folds are picking it up. And it gets a whole other different texture. And I can pick it up with my palette knife and move it around. And I don't want to cover everything up with it because I don't want the color on there as good. I just want to emphasize some of the, fo the folds. And I can, while it's still wet, I can move it around fairly easily with my palette knife. And I think actually all more, more what, of what I want to obscure is this Ollie's graphic over here. But I will use a little more on here. And because it's all still wet, it will move around with your palette knife. And that's okay. You can still reshape the folds to your liking. I'm just digging into this almost empty tube. All right, I think that I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so I'm going to leave this as is. Of course, I'm not stopping as I'm saying I'm going to leave it as is. I keep playing with it. That's the problem. It's hard to stop. Okay, really, I am going to leave it as is. Um, if the paint is too thick on this, 
grab another piece of plastic and make a print on it or leave it as is to dry. So I'm gonna move this piece to the side to dry. And now I'm going to move on to this heavy duty bag. I'm just gonna cut off this small portion of it. So for this bag, you can use it on the white side if you want things to be to have a white background but i like to use the color that's already there so the fact that it's silver is usable to me so the color the piece of plastic i'm going to put on top of it is going to be a clear plastic so i'm going to cut apart this red bag to use on top of this Okay, so I've cut it apart. In this case, I'm going to use it face down because I want to obscure some of the graphics on there. So first thing I'm going to do is put it aside. And where's my, I think there's purple on that bag. So I'm going to use my purple paint on here and I'm going to squeeze out a whole big glop, maybe a little more. spread it around a little bit. I don't want to completely obscure the gray. I want some of the gray to be still visible. All right, there, I moved it around, clean my palette knife. Actually, the purple is quite nice on this gray, so <laughs> I could just keep going and leave it as is. But no, I'm going to show you. So this bag, is actually not as big as that gray, but that's okay. So I'm gonna layer it on top and I'm going to smush it around. Now, because this bag, the gray bag is a little bit lighter, if I wanted to, if I, wanted to I could have used a little bit of blue tape to tape it to the, to the table to keep it from moving around. But why make life easy for myself? All right, so what I like about this is that I have this lighter stripe in here and this graphic is starting to look like lavender instead of the color that it actually is. So it's picking up that purple on the bottom. I'm gonna smush these things a little bit closer use a little more. I probably, I will not use all of this bag just because it's a little too long and a little too much of it. So I'm trying to keep the gray heavier bag in place so that it's not, so it's laying flat. So I have at least one part of my surface flat and then I'm smushing this bag on top of it. And because this bag is a little bit narrower than the gray bag, I'm not covering up all of my, uh, all of my gray bag, and that's okay. As I told you I like that gray, so we're gonna keep it there. I'm gonna turn this to the side here. Put this aside. So I have some paint on here. I'm just gonna smear it a little bit because I love the way it looks with the purple over the gray. So every part of it is going to be usable, whether I use this as a base for something or I use it as a material for my collage. Either way, all of it is beautiful and can be used in any way. So I'm just moving the paint around a little bit with my palette knife. And then I'm smushing it a little bit on top. And now I just want to make sure that my folds are as smushed down as possible. So some of them got a little bulky in here, so I'm moving them around.
Okay. So once again, I can leave this here as is, and this could be a start of my collage because it's got some great lines in here that's got this sort of rectangle and a smushed square and all of that. Or I can add a little more paint to it. I think I'm going to add a little bit of that ugly baby poop paint to it because there's a little bit of it here. And I'm just going to spread it around with my palette knife and see how the folds are picking it up. That to me is very pretty. So I'm just going to unevenly spread it out in some areas just to highlight some of the folds. and to sort of obscure the edges of the graphics. So this one had a hard edge and I'm just obscuring it a little bit with this gold. All right. There, I think I'm pretty happy with that. And then I keep going. Okay, so any questions on this? Or anybody want to share their progress? Mm -hmm. Yes, Kathy. Okay, I don't use Amazon, so I don't have any of those bags. What else okay. could I use as a base? So you know those big shopping bags that, I don't know, every supermarket sells now that are made out of plastic? It's a lightly woven plastic? Yep. You can use those. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea because I got lots of those. Yes, I bet you do. <laughs> yes. yeah. 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 And, and you know, the more you use them, the more worn they get and they have a lovely texture to them as well. And they're very okay. sturdy. I use them for a lot of basic for other with other uh, artworks. OK, that's cool. That's a good idea. I just don't have any of those bags because I just don't do Amazon. That's good. That's good. That's I, awesome. <laughs> I had an old Mylar balloon that's working just fine. Yes, that Mylar balloon, balloons yeah. work as very well. Mylar works, and it's got that shine to it. Yeah, it's pretty nice to use. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? I can hear somebody working really hard. Oh, let's see, Muffy. Let's see what else you got. Let's see. Hold on. Oh. oh, nice with a with a verbiage on it. Very nice. Yeah, I get my inspiration from some of the stuff you're doing. Awesome. Awesome. That looks great. That looks good. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, yeah. I've, uh... Let's see, Brenda. Hold on. Let me spotlight you. Let's see. Ooh, blue and silver. Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, my Amazon package was black. So ah, I put okay. Silver yeah. on, and then I put blue on as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So I would smush those. Maybe you need a little more paint underneath, actually, because you have a lot of um, of your folds are sort of coming up. I would yeah. smush them down a little bit tighter if you can. Right, I'll do that. All right. All right. So now let's get to some collage making. I'm going to put this aside to dry. And let's see. So here is a sample. Let me share my screen. Okay, so here's a sample. I'm going to go on with this one because it's smaller and I can go faster on here, but this will give you some ideas and because my two smushed samples are completely undry yet. But here I use that Amazon bag. As you can see, this says, thank you for shopping with us or something like that. And I smushed it on here. Now let's see. Here is my beautifully done 
clear plastic bag. I mean, I can just layer it right on top and it becomes a really lovely texture. But that would be too easy, right? Just moving things to the side here because my surface has gotten littered. The beauty of these clear bags is you can slice them apart and layer them and create something different. So I am putting this on top here. Oh, I like the way, so this has a lot of clear space on here and this has this paint on top. So I'm gonna slice aside and I'm gonna do, what I'm doing now is just a collage of these layers together. And I'll show you how to actually glue them together. That I'll show you in a minute. Um, but this collage can be left as is, or you can add stitching to it. If you're a stitcher like me, and I will show you some samples in a little bit. So a little bit of, mm, no, I don't think I want to add black. I like that, that there's a purple and there's a red. Here's the piece I did earlier with some gold. I think this could go, go well here. So I'm going to slice off a section. I know I just said I won't use any black, but here I am going for the black. Because guess what? I can change my mind a bunch of times. Oh, I like that. I think I'm going to cut it into strips. This is actually not fully dry yet, but that's okay. So I'm just playing with this for now and seeing what works well. I like these strips here. I think I would like a much thinner strip in the middle. Now, if this was fully dry and I wanted to cut a perfect strip, um, I would use a ruler and a rotary cutter or an X-Acto knife. But I am actually a fan of wonky lines. So I think I like this. This looks really cool. This cool looks cool. And now I am rethinking about my purple. Maybe I don't want it there. Maybe I want it here. Nope, I'm going to put it to the side now. I like this the way it is. Um, I have, oh, this is, this could be cool. So I have this bag, uh, which was a bread bag, and it had this clear portion that I printed with some of that magenta. I'm just going to cut it to the side, cut it apart. And this is where my work surface gets really, really messy. But look, oh, that's a really nice bright portion to it. I like the way that looks. Um, can I use some of this? Sometimes you got to look on both sides, what side you want to use. I like the way. So on this side, it comes through very differently, but I like that. I'm going to cut apart this piece here. So this is where you just play with it until you see a combination of colors and shapes that works really well for you. I mean, I'm liable to finish this workshop and then keep going here, making a bigger mess. But so I'm liking the juxtaposition of this somewhat sheer piece and these pieces here, the lines, and then adding a little texture on here. And I can still see the warding coming up from there. But I really want to see if I can use a piece of clear plastic over a portion of it and add it to this whole thing. I don't know, I keep coming back to that purple. So you see how that purple, because it's very clear and it's got just a little bit of color on it. So if I layer it on here, it obscures some of that print there and it adds more color to this piece. So this is actually a very happy little piece that I would be pleased with. So to glue these together, I use my big jug of matte medium. You can totally use some uh, basic white school glue. Um, I think it's actually a little 
a little ridiculous of me to be using a matte medium because it's an archival glue. Um, and here I am using it on plastic. So it's really not that necessary, but I really like this glue. There's just something about it. But paper glue will work just as, I'm sorry, school glue will work just as well. Now, here I'm going to use a smaller brush to brush on this paint. So now that I've figured out my composition, and I could keep playing with this composition, but I'm pretty pleased with it. And for the sake of time, I'm going to peel it back apart. And this is not quite dry yet, but I'll make it work. I'm gonna move things to the side here. Okay. So I'm just gonna move these things to the side. If they were completely dry, I would flip them upside down and put the glue on the back of them. But because they're not completely dry and because I really like the texture of them, I don't wanna lose the texture because if I flip them over, I'll lose the texture. Yes, chris -Ann. Ah, so uh, do you ever forget after you've designed it, how to glue it back down? Yes, I do forget. And I come up with a whole new design and that's okay too. <laughs> Oh, so you never like take a picture of it and say, oh, I really want to get that back. Sometimes I do. Yeah, it really depends. But most of the time okay. I forget to take a picture because I'm too much in the process. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then I'll I'll for, I'll put it back together in a different way. And that's okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Thank you. Sometimes it comes out better. So I'm just going to dab this glue on here. The glue will dry completely clear. So I, and because it's a matte medium, it will not be shiny. So I can put this glue on a rather large portion of it. And then I'll move my strips over to where I think they were. And just kind of press them on lightly. I think this is how they were. So I'm not, I don't want to press them too hard because I'm going to lose the paint on them. The paint on them is pretty dry. It's pretty wet. So I'm just going to tap it on with my end of my brush. This will adhere well enough. And if I need to lift up a corner and add a little bit of glue later, I can do that. All right. So now I'm going to glue on this piece. So sometimes it's hard to tell. But I would suggest on a clear piece of plastic like this, you pay attention to which side the paint is on because the glue can sometimes take the paint off. So this is the side, and you can usually tell by touching it which side the paint is on. So I have the paint is on this side and this is all dry. So I'm gonna put it paint side down and now I'm going to add glue to the other side. Now, sometimes, if you've made a mistake and you want to paint, take the paint off, then this is how you can take the paint off is with the glue. But in this case, I want to keep my paint on. And now I've glued it onto this place here. Okay. And then I have this piece here that went here. So in this case, I like the shininess and, and the, the, the paint feels more intense on this side. So this is the side without the paint, the paint is on the back side. And I don't know if you can tell, you probably can't tell on the screen, but it feels more intense on this side because I don't know why, because it just does, sometimes it does. So I want to use this side in my collage. So I'm going to be very careful applying the glue on here. I'm just gonna sort of dab it on because I don't wanna take the paint off. So I'm just gonna, just dabbing it on like that. And now I'm going to place it here. There we go. So I have some texture showing through the full, the smushed bag on top of the mailer. The texture is showing through a little bit. All right, so now I want to add this piece. And here I get to decide whether I like the shiny side up with the, the paint underneath, or if I want it the, the paint side up. 
I think I want it this way. I want the shiny side up. It's all about your preferences. So now I have to put the paint on the, sorry, the glue on there carefully without taking the paint off. So a little bit dabbing, a little bit of glue on here. So here we go. So it's not important to, you know, get the glue covering the entire surface. You can no, just... because some of the paint on there that's not completely dry, that will also act as a glue. Um, and you just, it, it depends what you're going to do with it. If you're planning to um, leave it as is, you might want to do a little more glue on there so it adheres really well. I usually add a lot of stitching to all of this. So I don't need a lot of glue on here. So all of these elements can be cut apart and put back together into a few, into collages like this. I'm going to show you a few collages because it seems here we're reaching the end of our two hours because I'm talking so much. I'm going to show you a few collages I, that I have I already done. I missed what kind of glue you're using. I use a matte medium. Okay, I thanks. use a golden matte medium, but a school glue will work just as well. The white school glue. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right, so here is a collage that I have prepared for stitching because I do stitch. Oh, I see there's a question in the chat. Oh, that was the glue question. Answered it already. All right, cool. So here's, so I started this. This is the black side of the plastic, but this is one of those plastic mailers. I smushed this white bag with purple paint on top of it. And then I used portions of another smushed bag. So this orange that you see on here, There we go. So this orange bag, oops, thank you. This is also a bag smushed on top of another bag. That's that's what these sections are here. And then this is a clear plastic with some white paint on top. So that's what's going on in that piece. This piece here is another one of those mailers. It was black on the inside. So I use the bubble wrap right on the black bag with silver paint. And I made a pattern on there. And then I smushed this white bag on here a little bit. I didn't use really big folds. Uh, and I used it with this, uh, with a sort of a yellow brown paint on top. And then these slivers are clear plastic with magenta paint on it. And I have another clear plastic on here that's only got a slight smattering of paint on it. So you can make really interesting combinations. So this is one of the prime bags. Um, and I have triangle shapes of plastic on here. Um, there's many more colors in here and many layers of plastic, but I'm just playing with it. And there's a shiny plastic in here too. It's a Mylar bag. So I'm just playing with slivers and putting them on on top here in as many co different combinations as I can. Here are a few more of my <clears throat> samples of, ba of bags that I have painted that I can use. So this is the white plastic bag. Here's that's with black paint. That's a, I think it's the same bag with red paint. This is a clear plastic bag that I used a light pink paint on with gold. I think it's really lovely. Here's my magenta. I went with a blue and green here. I can't wait to use this bag to orange on it. And let me show you a few more samples where I have already started stitching. Oh, here's a few more smushed bags. Here's some of that orange smushed bag. So it's on top of the other and I added blue paint on top. Here's a black and white bag. Here's a white and gold bag on top of some graphics, some, a Rite Aid bag. So there's so many different, depending on what <laughs> bags you are combining, you can have so much going here. Okay, so here are some more samples that I'm working on. These are all artworks in progress. So this is the, the Amazon mailer. I smushed 
several different colors of paint on there. Then I added slivers of a Mylar bag. <coughs> And I just cut them into slivers and I used the paint is what acted as a glue on here. I didn't need to use any glue at all. And I put a piece of clear plastic over the top of it. So it's all trapped in there and it's all not coming apart. Now I'm going to add some stitching to it. Here's a piece I already started stitching. Actually, I used mesh on here, the plastic mesh as a color. So again, the, the Amazon bag, I painted it with black, then I added a, a yellow mesh and I added a clear pla a white plastic and a clear plastic. And the paint on here is what's is the glue that's keeping it all together. And I started stitching with yellow thread on here. No stitching on here yet, but this is another Amazon mailer. <laughs> um, and here I used bubble wrap the pink bubble wrap that you saw me playing with before i ripped strips of it and i ripped strips of the clear plastic with the magenta paint on it and they're all glued on here in this pat in this diagonal here's another amazon mailer so on here i cut slivers of straws now i'm sorry we ran out of time i forgot to use straws but these straws I cut them into tiny, tiny slivers, and that's what they are here. You can see them on here. And I used a clear plastic that was printed with the wet uh, paint, which is still drying over there, but you can see how the that the wet paint made different types of textures. There's a much more a watery texture. So that's what keep it's keeping those straw slivers into place. I have not started stitching on this yet. Here's a piece I already started stitching on. You can't really see the stitching because I'm using a really fine thread and I'm adding even more texture to it, but it's another one of those mailers. And I used blue bubble wrap in here and then that clear plastic with black paint on it and magenta paint on it. And I'm just layering it all together. Here's a piece I'm starting hand stitching on. So this is one of those black mailer bags. And I printed on it with red paint. I smushed red paint onto it. Then I printed with a bubble wrap bag in silver on top of it. And then on here, I added various shapes of other plastic bags. So this is one of those smushed plastic bags with red and black on it and here as well. See the lovely texture that happens there? And I just cut it apart once it was dry and put it on here. This is another bag. Here's another piece of bag. There's another two bags sandwiched together on here. And now I'm adding a running stitch through here because stitching is what I do. So that's what I really enjoy doing. So this is a work in progress. Um, and here's another work in progress. As I, I Just like the other one, I still have the needle and thread on here. So here I used the prime bag again and then I used some of that packing material that's sort of spongy really thin so I painted that with a little bit of purple and that's the base of it and then on top of it I have clear plastic painted with black that is in these strips over here and then I have some a, a, a candy bag of plastic that I cut into these slivers and put on here. And now I'm adding a lot of stitching to it. Uh, this is a thick variegated thread. I was adding some blue big stitches on here and now I'm in the process of doing French knots through here. So I don't know if you can see that, there we go. So I'm gonna be adding a lot of French knots on here. So that's where the progress process is over here. So. These are just a few of the things that I'm working on with paint and plastic. So I'm going to stop share and see if you have any questions. How do I finish the edges? So that really depends on the piece that I'm working on. Um, sometimes I can just you know, take a ruler and cut a clean edge if I like to. Uh, a lot of other times I 
leave a wonky edge because that's fine too. Um, and other times I've used stitching. I do um, a blanket stitch on the edge or I, a lot of times, depending on the artwork and with these thicker ones, I won't do it because they're pretty thick and I kind of like them as is, but especially with the lighter artworks, I will put them onto um, stretch canvas or a cradle board. I glue it right on there and then trim the edges and paint the edges. And that gives it a really nice texture. Any other questions? Uh, ever try machine stitch? Yes. I always, no problem at all. Yes, I do machine stitching all the time on things like this. And some of the pieces I showed have machine stitching in them. Um, I use a, what, yes. I, oh, for hand sewing, for, so look, let me finish with the machine stitching. So I usually like to do free motion stitching. So I do a lot of thread painting um, so that I can just keep moving my piece around and do whatever I want on it. Um, I just use an embroidery foot so it doesn't actually press the material down as I'm stitching. I can move it all around. Um, any kind of needle, any kind of thread, you just got to play with your machine and see what your machine likes or not. Um, I usually because I usually just do free motion I very rarely use a regular machine foot to do any kind of straight stitching um, and I usually don't have any problem with it but I know that people who use straight stitching on their plastic a lot like to use a um, oh my god I'm blanking out on the name um, Teflon use it they buy a Teflon foot and that glides over the plastic easier I don't actually have one. I have not found the need for it, but I know people say that. Thread thickness on the machine, any kind of thread, it really depends. You know, the smaller the needle, the thinner the thread, the less of a hole you're making because just like paper, once you make a hole in plastic, it's there to stay. Um, you can always just use a spoon or a fingernail to rub it back out, um, but really any kind of thread. I've stitched with thick thread. I've stitched whatever my machine can handle. I will stitch with on plastic with. For hand stitching, um, I am a fan of the Sashiko needles. There's just something about them, the way they feel in my fingers that I really like. But again, you can use any kind of a needle. Some of the plastic you have to be wary of as you're hand stitching it. It's a little stretchy. Um, but that doesn't usually bother me at all. I just kind of leave it hanging or let it be uh, adding even more texture. So any other questions? <clears throat> Does anybody want to share what they've cre created so far? <laughs> oh, hold on, Muffy. Let me spotlight you. There you go. Beautiful. Yes, Cynthia. Oh, hold on. Let me spotlight you one second. Oh, very cool. I love that. Very nice. Oh, thank you, Adele. That's very nice of you. You're very welcome, Rhonda. Oh, I see there's more chat. What's up? Oh, they're just thank yous. You're so welcome. Any questions? I'm happy to answer any questions. And I would like to invite you, if if you like what you saw here, I would love to invite you into the Repurposer Collective. We've got so many master classes in there. Um, um, in the Repurposer Collective, there's a, a 22 workshops as of now of all kinds of different repurposed materials from, there's a ton of, uh, master classes on plastic. There's some on dryer sheets. There's some on hard plastic. There are some on color catcher sheets. There are so many things that you can do with all this materials that is wasted in the trash. So I hope at the very least, you will start including these materials in your regular artwork, whether you join the collective of not, or not. It's a free art material and you're doing a little bit to save the planet by using it here. So I hope that uh, you've gotten a little bit out of this and that you will be a, a warrior for this planet with me. Ooh, Muffy, what are you showing there? I can't hear you. You're muted. 
Uh, I'm showing you the collage I did last year. I don't, you might have seen it, but this was all with the newspaper bags. Yes. And the uh, and so the free stowing and a little bit of dice sublimation. That's lovely, then, Muffy. Yes, uh, I remember seeing it on your Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Does anybody else have any last minute questions or want to share what they've done so far? Hmm. No. Well, I hope you guys can stay here and keep and keep printing. Oh, yes, Elaine. Sorry, that was a mistake. I was looking for the clapper and I couldn't find it with my messy hands, but thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. I mean, you got your hands dirty now, so keep going. Make keep making this mess. It's so much fun. You'll have so much more material to collage together and to you know, collages or stitched artworks, whatever you like to do. There's lots to play with. So thank you so much. Thank you for all being here, spending thank your you. Saturday with me. Yes, Nikki. I just wanted to thank you. It was a wonderful class. I uh, learned a lot. I appreciate it. And most importantly, I appreciate that we're trying to save our planet. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Loved it. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you for being here. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend.